So I suppose I'll just start with introducing myself. I think Rob's already said a lot for me, so um, I'll just kind of talk about my work and what I do and, and how I go about it, I suppose. Um, the main aspect of my work, I suppose, is kind of exploring stuff and just testing new ideas. Um, a lot of my work is street art, but I test all my digital work kind of thing through a persona called Spacer, which started as a street art project. Uh, that project was called uh, about the space in between. And what I was interested in is, was in the moment after you leave, but before you get there. So that moment of space that's between something before uh, a starting and a finish point, I suppose. So space would be kind of became persona for that area. So um, through that, I started experimenting with loads of different stuff. And uh, then in about 2016, 17, maybe, I started looking into VR and testing it around. I played with uh, Deluxe Point, uh, or I played with Tilt Brush first, and it reminded me of a program called Deluxe Paint, which was 250 colors and a very simple tool back in the 90s. And I realized with the efficiency of the tools in Tilt Brush and how we can use them, uh, just basic uh, programs, uh, really efficient. And it's, I kind of was looking at that and thinking, well, why wow, this is going to be a really interesting space in three or five years because those tools are going to become really proficient for animators, filmmakers, architects, as we've just seen. And, and it'd be a whole new era of, um, I suppose the way I would describe it as people who got into Instagram when they came out and YouTube um, became photographers and became filmmakers and became uh, creatives through the accessibility of those softwares. So I think VR is going to be really pushing those kind of boundaries for um, different ideas. So. So when I was looking at VR, my ideas were all about uh, exploring it and seeing where it would take me and what I wanted to do with it. Uh, I did stop for a while and then kind of have been recently getting back into it with the idea of doing a big show, which I'll show you at the end of this demonstration. It's cool. So I'm just going to go through some stuff in a folder. I don't really have any slides. Uh, these are just basically videos. And as I play them, I will talk over them. So the first one, as I said, was painting with tilt brush, and this is a stencil art painting, which I wanted to kind of break down and dismantle. Sorry, I should actually put these in a loop. Um, that I just wanted to dismantle and kind of take into VR and make it into kind of a, a video piece. And as you can see here, it just kind of became a moving kind of artwork. Um, with that, I started playing with uh, sculpture software and um, from Adobe Medium, and this is more. So I'm going to skip through this because it's rather long, but it's just to kind of show you the tools and creating, uh, you know, art pieces, sculptures, sculptures mainly from um, 3D pieces and stuff like that. And these were just really kind of for me using the tools, testing the tools, see what it could do. I come from a filmmaking background, which is all um, avid cutting, After Effects, special effects, compositing but I'm not really familiar with 3D. So this was kind of a new space for me, similar to what Deluxe Paint was back in the 90s or whatever it was. Um, but yeah, so I started playing around with the Adobe Medium, I kind of really liked the fluidity of it. As I said, the tools are really simple and kind of uh, very easy to understand once you play around a bit. It takes a little bit of time to get used to them um, and also jumping between different softwares the tools change quite drastically, even though you're using the same menu system, and that becomes a little bit frustrating. So for an example, on a keyboard, copy, paste, copy, edit, all those things are the same, whereas on the controllers, they can be slightly different. Um, again, here's a kind of a speeded up version of just putting some of those pieces together using the stamps and different tools within the, the software. And with this one, I'm just kind of making up a little robot it's kind of just more for the testing what i can do it and how quickly i can do it so i think the end result is there nothing too fancy interesting enough this one became an interesting project this is a tilt brush and um, when i was painting this i was kind of thinking if i was an animator or if i was making a film how would i make a dynamic storyboard interesting from one painting um and tilt brush as well has also got like this big circular environment that you work in the the vr space and i wanted to see how big that space was by building the entire area in that space and i wanted to fill it up with as many little bits of particles and 
pixels and all these kind of things to make it an absolutely huge space because within Tiltbrush we can make these a small space and a big space and we can sp expand the space around us, I suppose. So because I could make it so big, I was able to get these ships to kind of get the camera moving past them and give the illusion that they were kind of moving in a sense. And this kind of started thinking, me thinking in the sense of, oh, this could be a bit of fun to try and do up a storyboard kind of thing. So I'm just going to fast forward through this a little bit and get to a more dynamic scene. Um, and this would be here. I'll just turn up the music for a sec, just just for a minute. So just. Uh, what happened there okay anyway so so it's quite dynamic and you can move the cameras quite quickly i had to speed some of the stuff up in the editing software because the space in the 3d space was so big that it would take like an hour for the camera to, to film the sequence so i had to play around with it a bit much the total end of this, I think, is six minutes in total, and it took a week to paint and a week to edit. So if you think now of an artist, student, or a film concept, or somebody who wants to concept an idea, building, or structure, or the fluidity of the style of something, you can do that quite easily in Tiltbrush by importing objects and all that kind of thing. I think this is only going to get better, and things will become more fluid in the sense of building these packages, because like now with Unity and Unreal, we can buy um, assets and that can help us build our concepts bigger and we can get to results quicker. Cool. I'm just going to stop this one here because that goes on a little bit long. Uh, the next one I want to show you is Deep Dive. And this is me just uh, working in VR and I'm painting a mural that I actually just completed last week. Um, and it was just really to kind of Rather than sketch it on paper, I wanted to sketch it in VR. It's nice to paint with your shoulder and not just your, your hand or your keyboard. Um, and to be able to paint in a real a virtual space of 10 meters in my living room was was pretty interesting to me. Um, I'll just skip through it there quickly because it's pretty much just the same thing. And if we now go into, oh, there's some ads. If we go into the deep dive painting, Oh, let me see where this is. Now I'm having issues with that there. And that's the end result of, of the painting. So it helped me kind of establish some color schemes and some ideas for the actual physical real world stuff. Um, and I added some extra ideas as well. Cool. And um, the next one is isolation space. Now this was from a print I made and I wanted to bring that print into VR and kind of make that into a 3D space and kind of make it interesting. Again, I'm using tilt brush here. You can see in the bottom of the screen, the simplicity of the menus. It's literally point and click and paint. Um, and then the video cameras are all fairly basic as well. The end result of that is isolation space, which is just a little 3D video of a spaceman playing video games. There is sound on this, I think. You might be able to hear it because my speaker is quite low. It's got Pac-Man and all the, the retro bits. It's kind of a really fun way to play as well. It's kind of quick, as I said, so you can get ideas down really quickly. Saving files incrementally, incrementally means that you can add different bits to different files. And you can kind of build on them as you go. And that's how I built the animation sequence, was like build one file, change a thing, build another file, change a thing and uh, it became very easy. So with this in mind, I started looking at then building rotational loops or looping artwork videos. Um, and these were the kind of setting about the NFT craze in the sense of digital video screens and present, presenting digital artists uh, on screens as a platform rather than canvas galleries, I suppose. And um, what's interesting to me here is that you can pause these videos at any point or paintings as you might want to call them and they could be individual pieces as well. They don't have to be all cartoony, obviously, as well. We can play around with different ideas. So 
Uh, for example, for here, this is uh, building a subway, uh, using the same idea of trying to build a rotational piece of art. And in this one, it's tilt brush, and you use these guides to kind of give you your flat and straight surfaces, and you can kind of build up interesting uh, shapes very quickly. Again, the ability to copy, paste, and do things very fast is pretty unbelievable. And it's kind of, uh, to coin a phrase, it's kind of like my Minority Report, the, the movie where you're picking and selecting and pushing and pulling things, uh, becomes really interesting. Um, <clears throat> at the end here, we can see that we'll go into some green screen, which is where how I exported the video. And then I take it into some video editing software to build a loop on it. So you just have to kind of spend a bit of time on that. And here it is with the video loop and then affected with a bit of After Effects and compositing. Um, I think I just doubled up the layers and changes a few lights in it. And uh, that was it. Cool. And um, let me then uh, talk about, oh, um, Dear Moon. Again, this is just exploring the NFT thing and using 3Ds and particles, uh, emitters, collision, also just to see how I'm kind of just learning and testing things, exploring them, and then I'm using some of my artworks to in be included. So those tests aren't a waste. There's always kind of something productive for me at the end result. Um, going into some street art, this is again another digital loop of the 50 Foot Heroes painting I did at the start of the pandemic. Sorry, I think there's a playlist or something there. Um, and this was... Um, for the start of the pandemic to in honor of the nurses and here i kind of obviously built the digital looping piece as well uh, with this i kind of wanted to expand on that again and turn it into an a or piece so i'm using viewphoria here from unity and uh, this was a standalone app and it's quite chunky because all the separate particles and pieces moving in it and stuff like that so it was quite a big download and it was one of the first reasons I was looking at thinking of trying different options because people weren't going to download a two or 300 megabyte app just to see one painting. There's a lot of kind of bad communication there between the artist and the viewer, I suppose. Um, again, here is another test of another painting that I did with Kevin Bowen, street artist. And he's here looking at the Space Invaders triggering off the spaceman playing the arcade machine. Uh, in this one, I also wanted to test the proximity of how far I could take an object from the trigger point. And as you can see here, he'll tilt around and I have a big spaceman down the, the laneway. So once you have your trigger loaded, before he was very much good at keeping that object there. And then you could play around and put stuff all over the place, which became a very interesting concept to me. Um, so after that, I've got some stickers, which uh, Rob might have mentioned. So if you go to my Instagram page, uh, I'm just going to pull up a folder here. If you go to my Instagram page and on the Instagram page, you'll see these three little stars. And if you find those three little stars, you'll see four images there, balloons, the 50 foot heroes and the walking spaceman. So if you pick any one of those three, and scan one of these drawings above it. I have the QRs there at the bottom. Uh, you should see some animated pieces going on. So I, if you can tell me in the chats if they're working or not working. And uh, I can't really hear anything, so I'm not sure. So I'll just hang on for a minute and give you a bit of time to play around, whichever one you want it. I, I shared it. I shared it with the in the chat there. So ah, okay, right, cool. Um, cool. Well, um, oh, you've shared you've shared the images as well. I can send this image into the chat, or if you want. Um, yeah, actually, that one. might that might be quicker. Yeah, I put a link to your Instagram. Okay, cool. Um, and I can send you this image so people want to look it up. I might even have it on my page that if they they jump onto the page, they can have a look. Anyway, I'll go ahead. I'll get these images to Rob and he can send them out to everybody later. And um, maybe that's an idea just to keep me going. Uh, I'm conscious of time. <laughs> so let me go back now to where I was. Um, so, okay. So with all that in mind, I started uh, 
trying to think of a concept of an exhibition that I wanted to do firstly because I haven't shown some paintings in quite some while I'm always out doing street art and they're outdoors you don't have to worry about exhibiting them um, so I wanted to put on a show which would be immersive and educational and an experience and also teaches about different ways we can display art through immersive technologies in either building it, exploring it, um, concepting and practicality. So with that in mind, I started with a first project uh, screening at the Living Planet or the Living Canvas earlier in Dublin this year. And this is kind of an animated piece about technology and space and how we walk into the future of new spaces, in, in other words, uh, VR and AR. I'm going to skip through this quickly. It's a five minute long piece, it loops. And um, there is audio to it, but um, it's probably not going to be the most engaging thing at the moment. This is kind of just an idea of it. It's quite metallic and um, relaxing to watch the full thing, I think. Anyway. Cool. And it goes on a little bit like that, but there is uh, different things that happen towards it, but it's all about rhythm, movement uh, and engaging in spaces. Cool. Um, next, I have Falling All Morning, which is going back now to the painting, but this is kind of one that really made an impact on me um, in the sense of where it started from and where it went to. So this was originally a canvas painting with stencils, spray paint. And then I made that into an AOR file with a 3D uh, object to it, almost like a, you know, an AOR, AOR 3D piece, I should say. And then with that, then I wanted to make it into a, a rotational piece, which would be somewhat interesting. And I was trying to figure out how to do that in a 3D space. Uh, the answer was to build stuff on a curve or a planet. I think you might have seen it in one of the videos Rob showed you earlier. Um, and the result is here. I'm going to just turn up the audio. Oh, wrong video, white flash there. That's not supposed to be there. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's a kind of a really nice, interesting mood piece. And when you're in VR, looking at that in a VR gallery, it, it's really interesting space. So again, now building on that, I want to test that out and see how it would look in VR. So let me see if I can open this and transfer the screen. Um, I started to build a VR gallery. We're going to look at the third person view because if I look at the VR gallery, I'm going to have to put on the headset and take you through that. So the third person should work. I'm just going to open it here. Just needs one second to load. Rob, if you can let me know if I'm, I'm short in time or taking up too much time, I'll just let this boot. You're great. Good. I'll oh, warn you. Let me transfer screen actually. Uh, oh, that's a pity. I wonder what that is. It's locked onto my left screen. So let me see if I can. Oh, no, I can't. Sorry, no, that's actually not going to work. I'm stuck in it now, sorry. <laughs> Let me close this. Sorry, I'm going to have to show you something else there. It's not really working there. Sorry. So I'm just going to show you the slideshow for for that at the moment. Sorry about that. That's a bit of a pain. Um, so eventually, Immersion On is the name of the exhibition. Um, it's going to be connecting. I'm going to China actually to open on 
May the 20th to try and explore the possibilities of this show. And we'll be connecting Ireland and China, art and technology, exploring and learning commissions and partnerships. Uh, the idea of the show is to create a virtual and uh, real time, real world uh, art exhibition and experience for different people. Um, here's some tips from the exhibition in there. Um, and as we'll go through the exhibition, we'll go from real world through virtual pieces, through a Orphy pieces. And I want immersive sound in each of the areas as well. So each of the triggers from each of the artworks will relate to each other uh, around the hallway. Um, we have fewer multi-viewing boots and stuff like that as well. So different experiences for different people to go through what they want. Um, it'll include street art and digital art, digital work, um, and AOR work. Here's the falling all morning picture that, from the previous gallery. Um, and this is the entopic space one, which is the uh, augmented reality painting that we mentioned earlier, developed in Tiltbrush. Uh, what's interesting about this augmented feature to this painting I found really interesting was, again, the space in between the real and the virtual. And these kind of prints were taken from photographing the augmented feature over the, the painting. And I thought they were interesting abstract uh, pieces from, from that work. Uh, the painting is called Entropic Parts, and this one is because, yeah, Entropic, sorry, I should read out what Entropic means. Uh, entropic is an objective autonomy, autonomy situated in its normal place or position uh, from Greek Entropos in a place from Topos place. So I really liked the abstract elements to all that in relation to the space in between. Uh, and again, this is the space here at Living Canvas in Dublin. Um, earlier this year. So I think I'm probably up for time now. Sorry about the um, little gallery thing didn't work there. It would have been nice to do a quick run through. Um, just, oh, hang on. Do you know where I might have a video of it? Just so we can go through some stuff. Um, do, do, do. Renders should be here. So. So literally, it's a 3D or a virtual area and gallery. And you can see some of the paintings here. At the end wall, we have the uh, augmented pieces. And then we have uh, diff different stills from different artworks uh, as a sample. Uh, now, this is just really kind of a display for me in the sense of learning and uh, figuring out Unreal Engine in this case, rather than Unity. I wanted to go, as Camille said, for good lighting and good atmospheres. And I really wanted to envelop that space. Here we've got um, the falling on morning piece, but it's on a large projection around the room. And it also has an audio trigger. So when you walk into that room, that will trigger off and play the audio. So again, like the architecture and um, having experiences where people can attend at any place, it's a really powerful tool. But I want people to attend this exhibition in the other exhibition. And I want to relate and make those spaces kind of confusing in a way or at least the artworks uh, and i want people kind of wondering and questioning what the hell is going on as they leave because i think that those questions can formulate real good ideas in creative thinking and um, uh, problem solving and ultimately i think painting is problem solving i think as an artist we we think in single frames in some cases and we need to express what that is and how we go about completing that and finishing the work is solving that problem in our own minds, I think. So uh, with VR and all these experiments, I, it's a really exciting place to be um, and really exciting what will be in the future in the sense of how these will be uh, accessible for everybody, the ease of use and also the progression of technology in the rate that we're doing it is also um, very interesting. Along with AI, just as we're saying that, I think as well that uh, AI takes stuff that from we, what we already know, it learns from us. Um, so it's interesting to know that creative processes are our own. And, you know, actually I've done some experiments with, with AI in relation to trying to design street art pieces. Uh, yeah, I might want to include something. And it hasn't once given me back an image that I needed the way I needed it. So that's that's some, something to think about, maybe. Um, I think that's probably enough for now. I'm probably going on a bit much. So thanks very much for listening to me. Rob, thanks for having me. I'm so sorry about the problems earlier. I hope um, this is all good. No, no, no. 
That was brilliant, Shane. Thanks very much. That was um, fantastic. Um, you make right. it look easy. You know, you're saying their tilt brush is easy to use. I, I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, I'm kind of very lucky in the sense I've I've got a lot of experience from filmmaking tools and um, and kind of playing around in, in that for so many years. It just I kind of hop between painting and filmmaking the whole time, um, and, and and I suppose it's kind of goes down to having a passion for playing around with new ideas, I suppose, um, and just kind of wanting to experiment. I often find that I don't complete things. I just spend more time experimenting in them. <laughs> so, so I'm hoping this immersion on show will be a, a culmination of all, all that knowledge together, I suppose. Yeah, you're going to have to get back in touch when the, when the show starts and let us know. Hopefully, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, I, I like what you're saying there about accessibility as well, you know, like allowing more people to view and experience this art and also gives the artists the opportunity because like you don't have much, you know, in, in an art gallery, you don't have much control over the light or the size of the walls or the rooms or everything. But in this, you can, you can kind of like how you want people to see it. You can, you can, yeah, like the yeah. physical space as well. Yeah, I really like that idea. And the, putting the falling all morning back into the virtual gallery was a really interesting concept for me in the sense of then building VR and VR and VR. So um, in other words, in gameplay levels, it's level one, level two, level three. But in an art sense, we can delve into that story differently um, and make it more abstract, you know, so that's that's kind of cool. Uh, the accessibility for people is literally the, the speed of those tools once, you know, people, it's kind of like I say, where everybody was kind of became photographers when Instagram came out, yeah. you know. And, and I think this would be the same for illustrators and people who write books and you know, uh, people, you know, for example, somebody drawing a kids' book, they can draw a kids' book on a kitchen table, and if they want to make it into a film, it's a massive production. They have to build all their assets. If they draw their assets in Dior, they can export all their assets for their books, their prints, their whatever else. So it's a different approach to working. And the speed of learning it is is kind of cool. I'm lucky I have those filmmaking tools, as you said, because I can patch those things together in the back, you know. But VR will happen where we're doing all that in one space, you know. 